Good morning, Facebook friends. Uh, it's our Saturday stroll, so grab your cup of coffee and we'll take a look around. You can see that we're in a different area today. And normally we've been doing the Saturday strolls in our back growing greenhouses. Um, I'm bringing you up to our selling area. So what we do up here is we bring up a little bit of everything so that everybody can see what we have. And then we just keep restocking and restocking and restocking from those back greenhouses. Um, the back greenhouses have those movable benches, so we can't have customers shop back there because of just the mechanics of it. So this is where we, everybody comes in to shop. So you can see all the baskets behind me, the benches, and we'll just take a walk through um, to see everything. So let me just flip this around real quick. So when you walk in, this is pretty much how you see it. All the baskets are up high. And then we have another greenhouse, which we're still setting up display areas. And we'll be opening here um, in two weeks on Thursday, April 25th, 2024. And you can see Scott's, Scott's over there getting, just checking on stuff. As far as the blooms go, let's take a look at some of this. So the geraniums are looking good. And within two weeks, all of these, all of these buds will be blooming out, doing great. Look at how pretty that pink is. That is the one with the white throat in it. Of course, the red. And how many of you plant geraniums? Or maybe I should ask, plant the same thing in the same spot every year. I'm gonna take this and just show you the difference in color here. So here's the salmon and there's the orange. They're really close. The salmon's just a little bit lighter in color than the orange. This is a lavender, and you can see the white behind it. Isn't that pretty? That's a different plant. That's that velvet. I'm sorry, not velvet, violet. And of course, along the edges, we have all the different vines going on, and you'll see just lots of those along the edges here. The Gerbera daisies are blooming. We got them in a little bit later than we normally did, um, but it looks like when we look down into them, they're just starting to set out. You see those buds right there? So within two weeks, those should be up and blooming and looking gorgeous. I can't wait to see the colors. Same thing with the dahlias. We like to have them right about this point because when you come in, we want them going through their first cycle of flowers. This one here is called Tequila Sunrise, and that's a dahlia. And look at, again, look at all those buds. Isn't that beautiful? There's one in the back here. Let's take a peek. Look at that little guy. That is the, it's yellow red eye is what it's called. And it's exactly the color that you would expect. Yellow with a red eye. The diplodinas are starting to bloom. And those are going to crawl up and vine. Thimbergia, if you're um, not familiar with them, they are a super aggressive plant. Great for trellises. They drink a lot. They definitely need full sun. And that is, that flower, if you can see it with my fingers, is just a little bit bigger than like a quarter size. And then it has the dark throat. And this year we have yellow. We normally have quite a few colors, but it seems like... Um, we had more room for other plants that were selling faster. So we have just the yellow this year, uh, super aggressive. So great for like around the mailboxes or trellises, give them somewhere to climb because they definitely want to do that. They'll take over the candy corn vine. 
and that flower is going to be just this little tiny and it will flower all the way up but you can see look how just how little that is looks like a little candy corn we have some fuchsias that aren't quite blooming yet but they're getting their buds You can see we have lavender and it smells so good. I keep snipping little bits off just to, I say to control growth, but really it's to put it in the house. So it's pretty early in the morning. So stuff is just starting to open up. So like the portalacas or moss roses or purslane, whichever you'd like to call them, um, they will open up once the sun really hits them. So all of these flowers in here, and over here, those will all start opening. At nighttime, they tend to close up. And geranthemum, beautiful. There's different colors. And again, some of the blooms are just, we've cut back and now they're, they're getting ready to bloom again. You can see in there, they're starting. Popcorn caspia. If you're not familiar with this plant, this is a really neat one. Even if you just come into the greenhouse and just say, I just want to see it. Uh, the flower gets to be kind of like this cone shape. You Can you see that? And it smells just like the name. It smells like buttered popcorn. It is the most unusual smell ever. You either love it or you hate it. Um, it gets pretty tall, so you have to give it a sunny spot, and it, you know, it gets quite tall. Right next to it is another smelly one, the heliotrope. And that's the flower on it. And this one smells like vanilla. If you open up a bottle of vanilla, that's exactly what the heliotrope smells like. And again, this is kind of our smelly bench here. Um, we have the citronella, which they don't get a flower per se, but they get bushed out. And of course, the mosquitoes don't like them. Dragon wing begonias. More begonias. The Rex begonias. I love these colors. I see a lot of hearts going and I, I totally agree with you. Look at that, so much fun. These are the proven winners. These are the super petunias. Uh, this was a later crop because we planted most of them up in baskets. So by the time we open again, all of this will be two weeks along and that makes two weeks in a greenhouse is makes a huge difference. These are the sun impatience. Look at that striping. You know there's no Photoshop going on when it's a live video. And over here we have uh, the Salvia. This is the proven winners again. Um, this one is the Fuchsia. And when it opens up, it looks a little red on the screen, but when it opens up, it gets more of that very Fuchsia hot pink, um, darker color. This is Rockin' the Blues. It has a much different flower than the other one, if you see the difference here. The butterflies and the bees love, 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 love this. Here you can see again more of the salvia. This is the purple. And that's, you see when it opens up how dark that is up on top? And then when it opens its flower, it's got that purple coming out. And that fuchsia will do the same thing as they'll have that darker color and then go. These are the easy wave petunias. And everybody is growing along nice. And again, by the time we open, all of these will be blooming and flowering. You can see right here, they're starting. So it's a plant and wait, plant and wait. But it's fun to see the growth of how everything is. And if you've been with us on Saturday strolls, 
it's just been amazing how quick everything has just grown out. Look at how big these are already. That's an Ipomoea. That's a vine. Um, pretty aggressive one. There is more compact ones also. These are coleuses. And we did a video on this, I think, last week on the different varieties. And there's so many. I, I love this one, too. Look at, look at how that color pops. Are you just picturing what you're going to stick with these? I always look at them and I go, ooh, what can I plant with it? This one's my favorite. Look at that. Look at that leaf. Petal, look at. It's got all the little fingers coming off of it. The cannas are coming along. So this year we have a mango colored, a bronze orange, and a yellow. Rubrum grass is always a favorite, especially when it comes to fall. Um, it gets those beautiful plumes that come out from it. The verbena. So you have the solid color, and then right next to it, we have a bicolored. So there's the purple. And there's the pink. Pretty, pretty. The lobelia showing off color. These look like little tiny sunflowers. It's actually San Vitalia and that's how big, let's see if I can get it focused here. That's how big the flower is. So you'd use this more like a filler type of flower. Alyssa, more vines. And you can see the sun's starting to poke through, but look at how far along all those baskets have come. In our other greenhouse, we have um, that's a selling greenhouse, we have a wall of baskets. So instead of having to look up, like you're, most people have to look up for them, um, they can look just straight on. But room-wise, it works well. Adjuratum. I'm so excited for these to start blooming. These are the osteosperum, and there's going to be this purple color, and then there's also this copper, and if you see, it has like a yellow edging to it, and those, are, those aren't quite blooming yet, uh, but they match so well together. And then, of course, I have yellow and a few other colors. There's this uh, trade wind sunset that we'll also have. And it really does come out like that picture where you see that yellow, yellow edging. Brachianthus or straw flower. The lantana, here's some that are, let's see in here. Look at that. Kind of goes from a peach to a yellow. And then there's the solid yellow. Going into pink to yellow. I love the bicolors. Lantana is one of those plants that the deer don't care for most of the time. I'm gonna say most of the time because there's always that person that says, oh, they've eaten my lantana, but most of the time they don't go near them. They do need quite a bit of cleanup though. If you don't clean them up, they'll start getting kind of funky. 
love all these colors. And then we go into the different colors of petunias. It's fun to come out. Oh, look at that. That one's really having not just spots, but striping on it. And each one is so different on those speckles. These are the black petunias. So do you like solid colors or do you like the bicolors or stripes? The fuchsia baskets are all starting to set out buds. Let's see, that's gonna be We have more begonias here. And we're just starting to get everything filled in. Um, everything is spaced right now just for growing wise to be able to give them some room. Once the season starts going and everybody starts coming in, I'm going to just slide around this way and let's go there. Once they start coming in, everything will be much closer together because it goes off the shelf so quick. Can you tell what colors I'm I'm favoring? I'm favoring those light pastels. And spikes. And then of course, baskets, baskets, baskets. So that's the front part. And then we need to finish off doing our displays here. And then in the, you walk through a little bit further and we have a whole bunch of tomato plants. And these are our beat your neighbor plants. So they're the larger plants that are started much earlier. Cucumbers, it gives everybody that little head start and, and gets the season rolling. The impatience are all looking great. These are the bedding begonias. Bedding begonias are one of Scott's favorite I think we're going to ask him that later, but then I know this is one of his favorites to plant because they, they're so easy to care for. And they're just babies right now. And it's going to let's see vines, 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 and there's baskets just everywhere. Here we have the celosia. Do you see that color going on right in there? Lots of different varieties, even within the same, you know, when we talk about like wax begonias, there's different colors, different, different varieties that we carry. More coleus. And last year we sold out of bedding coleus so quickly. It was just craziness. And so this year we have, I think, four different crops phased through. So we should have coleus for, for quite some time. Aren't those beautiful? Yeah. Dusty Miller. So, but this is bedding coleus. I'm sorry, bedding salvia. So this salvia is not the same as proven winners. Um, it's going to stay more for borders or small containers. It's not going to get real, real tall.
more vines. You always hear of when you're doing containers, you know, have some a something tall, something lower, and something that comes trails down. So height filler spiller. Obelia we got in a little bit later this year, so so that it was not overgrown in those little cells. Here is verbena, and this is bedding verbena. And these are all mixed packs, so it's kind of, you're not quite sure what you're getting as far as color, but when they start blooming, people can see and then they can choose. Snapdragons are coming along, and you can see the difference between um, I think these are two weeks apart that they were planted. So you can see this size compared to this size. And that's just, I believe it was two weeks apart. Not much time. But the snapdragons are, are starting to bloom just a little bit and they're so little right now. The zinnias are coming along, more dahlias. These are bedding petunias. And there is a difference between a bedding petunia, a mounding petunia, a trailing petunia, and a super petunia. So if you have not watched the video on Petunias, uh, we did talk about that also within the last week or two, telling you the difference on all of them. Really informative, so check that out. We overplanted on baskets just a tad bit, so we have a few behind and Need to find them a home sooner than later. And I'm sure we'll be we will be opening up, like I said, in two weeks, and so that'll we'll have room and we'll start replanting again. This is a double impatient, and those are in baskets. Kelly Bercoa. And now this is such a fun part. Look at all these pansies. Who loves pansies? I feel like I should name each one with their little faces. She looks mad. They have such different sizes. So this one has a, a great big head to him where then you have the next one that's not quite as big. And within the pansies, there's all different types that you can get, you know, as far as the different colors or the different faces. Some are solid and they don't have a face to them. And then down here, we have some that have fringes. Can you see it has just a little bit of a ruffle at the edges of it? Pretty, pretty. How many of you plant with the pansies? Pansies are a little bit cooler weather flower. They really flourish well in that. You can see the vines just keep along all the edges are the vines just so they can drape along the edge. And then down below even, we have baskets of begonias 
a little bit more shaded. You look, there's baskets everywhere. I'm gonna bring you over to this one real quick. Isn't that beautiful? So here we have more verbena. This is the portulaca. Portulaca is always a little bit slower growing, but once it starts, it just flourishes. We have these are marigolds and the difference between you can see, I don't know if you can see quite the difference, but do you see the height difference between this section and that section? So this bench is going to be the Inca marigolds. And you can see the buds are all starting in here. And this marigold is going to get a little bit taller and a much bigger head. They don't bloom. They they're consistently blooming, but they're not quite as vigorous as the shorter version is. And this is the shorter version. And they have a little bit smaller head, but lots and lots of blooms. More marigolds. Marigolds are very popular up here. It's an older flower, uh, but it just performs so well. The animals don't really care for it as much. So a lot of people will plant them in either poorer soil or in the garden where it has good soil, but they don't want the, the deer or the bunnies to come in. They, they tend to stay away from them, but again, if they're mad and they're gonna eat, they're gonna eat. Isn't that a pretty one? That's called Fluttering Heart. And that's in a little eight inch basket. Here are the Vincas. And right above them is more pretty baskets. I believe this one was called Cherry, Cherry Vanilla. And then you have that solid. We always show the petunias off because they're the first ones to start blooming. Take you across to this one. Look at that. And then we have gazanias. Gazanias are a beautiful plant. They get a daisy style flower to them. And you can see here, this one is the yellow flame. But do you see how that has that striping on it? It really does look like the picture. They are a nice mounding plant. They like to be in poor soil, uh, so well drained, and they like it very warm. So that works out well with people who are vacationing or maybe don't attend to their plants quite as much as others. A deadheading is always good on them, but not absolutely required. So this is our second greenhouse. We also have another greenhouse, which we won't go into today, um, but that one consists of basically more of the same plants, just kind of an overflow of them, and then a lot more baskets. We are known for our hanging baskets, so that's what we focus on. Uh, we do not do perennials because we found that we are really good at the annuals and the vegetables in the baskets. So do what you're good at and, and do it well. Pretty, pretty. That is that double petunia. 
So we're getting so excited. Our little butterfly hanging. We're getting so excited to start our season and everything's looking good. And by the time we open, everything will have grown two, three, fourfold and have a lot more blooms on it, which will be ready for everyone to start purchasing. Here is, this guy is like an orange with a yellow throat. It's fun to come out in the morning and just see, you know, what flowers have popped and started blooming. And it just seems like overnight they'll either grow or they'll, they'll start budding. But I will leave you on the note of some pretty pansies. Get you ready for the planting season if you're in the states that haven't started already. And I hope you have a great rest of the morning. We'll see you back on Monday. Happy spring, y'all.